Today I'd like to continue our discussion about the relationship between forgiveness and joy uh, as we take a look at the dialogue between Bishop Desmond Tutu, <coughs> the uh, uh, bishop from South Africa, and the Dalai Lama, who is presently uh, in India. Bishop Tutu, in reflecting on the importance of forgiveness, says that, indeed, no one is incapable of forgiveness, and no one is unforgivable. Uh, interesting dynamic there. No one is incapable of forgiveness. So we all have the ability to forgive. It's there. We can do it. But, of course, we can also tend to hold back and not forgive. And also the fact no one is unforgivable. And you might reflect on that a little bit and say, well, <laughs> as, as I look historically, you know, this particular figure did crimes that were so horrible, so outrageous, they really are unforgivable. But when you analyze it deeper, what we're really saying is each person has the potential to turn away from that evil at some point in their lives and to choose another path. That experience that we call conversion, when somebody turns away, and sometimes it's stunning uh, and sometimes very surprising. We saw it, of course, in the scriptures, in the famous story of Paul, uh, when he was acting as Saul, he was persecuting Christians, and he has his conversion, and he becomes a dynamic and amazing missionary for Christ. We see that many times with prisoners who commit terrible crimes, and then they go through a rehabilitation process, and they come out and they do much good for humanity. They change. So change is possible. And so Bishop Tutu would say that no one is unforgivable. The Dalai Lama affirms that with an amazing story, the story of Richard Moore, uh, during the troubles in Ireland, Richard was shot with rubber bullets on the way home from school. Richard was nine or ten years old, very young. And to control the crowd, the soldiers would, instead of using real bullets, would use these rubber bullets. And Richard got caught up in this, just walking home from school, innocently, trying to get home. Richard wound up losing eyesight in both of his eyes. You can imagine this young age, now not able to see for the rest of his life. What a tragedy, what a terrible thing, what an awful thing. Richard, though, got married, uh, had a very positive attitude towards his life, uh, had two daughters, and Richard wound up seeking out the British soldier who shot him, and he offered him his forgiveness. The Dalai Lama says, after reading the story, getting to know all about it, said, Richard is my hero. And he is a hero because he showed a tremendous amount of forgiveness. Many people in that situation would never have forgiven the person that shot them, but not Richard. He offered forgiveness to that soldier. And many times in the offering of forgiveness, there is a tremendous healing that occurs, both within ourselves and the, and the other person. So the uh, question was asked then of the Dalai Lama, in terms of an analogy to the story of Richard, how about you? Can you offer forgiveness to the Chinese? And we saw how he was treated uh, he had to leave Tibet. He had to leave Tibet at night. He had to leave Tibet in disguise. He was persecuted by the Chinese. The Chinese did terrible things to 
many of the Tibetan Buddhists. Uh, it was horrible. And so, can you offer forgiveness to them? Dalai well, Lama responded and he talked about a concept, a Buddhist concept that is very important. And that is Tonglen. And Tonglen is taking the anger and fear into yourself and transforming that anger and fear. Instead of offering anger and fear back, you offer love and you offer forgiveness. And you can see how this would take a tremendous spiritual process within a person to be able to do this, <laughs> to be able to offer love and forgiveness after you have been so terribly mistreated. And the Dalai Lama says, well, I have a concern for the well-being of those Chinese because of all of the negative karma they have created through killing and through hatred. So they have done all these negative things, these hard things. Well, that's going to affect them when they have brutalized other people, when they have tortured them when they have killed them. What is the effect on the human person? What's the effect on the Chinese person? And that's the Dalai Lama's concern. What about them? What are they feeling? How can I reach out to them and help them? And the Dalai Lama speaks about what forgiveness is not because sometimes we have the wrong, totally wrong idea of forgiveness. Since forgiveness is not forgetting, no, we don't forget what happened. It's always going to be there. It's in our memory. It's an experience we've had. It's a trauma, maybe, that we've experienced. It's going to be there. Forgiveness is not a lack of response. Oh, no. Forgiveness always involves a response. We're responding to the person. We're not just totally going off on our own and just not dealing with it, no. It demands a response when we've been harmed. It's also not allowing yourself to be harmed again. You were harmed once, and now you're going to arm yourself spiritually to avoid that harm, to take steps to prevent that harm from affecting you and others. It's also refraining from seeing that the perpetrator is not punished. So there is a punishment that is due if someone has caused you harm, if someone has abused you or hurt you in some way. There's a corresponding punishment that that person must experience. Forgiveness is not allowing someone's wrongdoing. It's not saying your wrongdoing is okay. No, you must take appropriate action to stop the wrongdoing. So if someone is harming me, what can I do to stop that? How can I get that message across to them that this is wrong and that this should never ever occur again? So forgiveness is not some passive experience. It's really an active experience of engaging with the person to make sure that the harm they are doing to yourself or to other people does not continue. And I think that gives us a real sense of the connection then between forgiveness and joy. Because when you offer that type of forgiveness, you're experiencing the joy of loving them. And you're also inviting them to experience a deeper sense of joy by stopping the wrongdoing, which really is hurting them. 